Hey everybody, welcome back to Word Balloon. This is John Suntress. Before we get to the show, a couple show notes. I have a YouTube channel under Word Balloon. It's free. I'm trying to reach at least a thousand subscribers. I'm just over 800. Everybody's been great. I was at 300 when I first started asking about this, and now I'm over 800. I need to hit a thousand. I would like to start doing uh, live chats on a semi daily basis and uh, involve the Word Balloon audience, but I need to reach 1,000 subscribers before I can start live chatting. So please, it's free. Would you uh, please consider subscribing? And uh, it's only going to mean more content. I've already got video content up there at uh, my Word Balloon YouTube channel. Check it all out. Also, I know commercials can be a pain in the ass. I know I've been talking about this. Please listen to all the commercials, even uh, the older episodes. I know they interrupt about a minute into the show with one more commercial. Uh, I'm trying to fix that, but in the meantime, if you could suffer through that... Uh, It's one of the ways I get paid at Word Balloon is by listening to all the commercials. It's greatly appreciated. In fact, one more spot right now, and then we'll start the show. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntra is here. I'm talking to film director Jared Cohn today, who uh, has a brand new horror adventure film out called Devil's Revenge. It stars William Shatner and Jerry Ryan. And it also has another Star Trek uh, connection, Maurice Hurley, who was the uh, Season 2 Next Generation showrunner. He is featured prominently in Shatner's documentary, Chaos on the Bridge. But uh, as the uh, title suggests, Devil's Revenge is a demon-hunting movie that Shatner is leading a team. And it sounds like it has an interesting mythology. Jared talks about that. He also talks about a new movie that he has made... Uh, that is, uh, as he said, just entering the film festival period, and it's called uh, Street Survivors. It's all about Leonard Skinner's uh, history as a as a band, and also their tragic late seventies plane crash, which uh, is a controversial subject, and uh, so controversial that there were even lawsuits trying to block Jared from making his movie. Uh, man, I'll tell you, I'm very psyched about that, and frankly, uh, the conversation is more about. Uh, uh, the uh, Leonard Skinner movie than this uh, Devil's Revenge with Shatner and Jerry Ryan, but I wanted to give him his due. He's a, he's a guy that uh, specializes in a lot of uh, genre fiction. He does a lot of sci-fi and a lot of horror, um, interesting films, and uh, I just think it's interesting to talk to filmmakers today about um, you know the various platforms, the streaming platforms, and uh, you know films are just as likely to debut in streaming as they are uh, in the theaters. Um, and uh, digitally, and again, uh, Devil's Revenge already available now for you to download it and purchase at iTunes and Amazon Films and, and anywhere else you could think of to uh, to grab movies. I'm sure it's on your cable systems right now as well to grab. And uh, intriguing film. But I, uh, I like I said, I do think the Leonard Skinner subject as well is uh, is interesting. So it's going to be fun talking to Jared Cohn later today on Word Balloon. Hell, uh, the Picard p- uh, trailer is out. And also the teaser for the next season of Star Trek Discovery. Now, you know my frustrations with Star Trek Discovery. I'm not going to go into it. I will speak positively, though, about the Picard trailer. I think it looks fantastic. It dropped at New York Comic Con. Isn't it interesting that just a couple of years ago, and it was a different company. It was Warner Brothers in the case I'm about to suggest. But do you remember uh, when the um, Suicide Squad teaser trailer came out about a year before the movie came out? And it played at Comic-Con, and, you know, people whipped out their phones and and recorded it, and it popped up on YouTube in various places. And Warner Brothers had this very testy kind of, uh, you know, statement saying, well, this was supposed to be a Comic-Con exclusive. And, yeah, I'm being mocking on purpose because I'm like, well, don't you want the thing to be enjoyed by everybody and have everybody talking about it rather than the couple, you know, thousand people in Hall H that were privileged enough to see it? Thankfully, things have changed. And just as they were dropping it on uh, New York Comic Con, uh, it popped up Saturday afternoon in everybody's YouTube feed, so we could all enjoy it, already start talking about it, start speculating about the mystery woman, what's her connection to Picard. Uh, I think all of us are, are thinking along the same lines. I don't want to even spoil that stuff, because I think that the trailer itself is still oblique enough for us all to speculate. But I do think that uh, it's an interesting idea. Um, I, so if you are interested in like learning now, by all means hunt around. You'll find it on various YouTube uh, speculation sites. Um, but I like what we know already. I like all the cameos that clearly are going to happen beyond the core new cast. And Jonathan Frakes is back, and Marina Sirtis is back, and um, Hugh is back, and uh, certainly Data 
figures quite prominently in uh, Jean-Luc Picard's mind, at least, if not physical being. Uh, that's going to be really interesting. But, uh, man, I'll tell you, the new trailer, boom. Another new scene with Data. Very, very interesting. Um, all of it. I think it looks really, really great. And I think uh, Patrick Stewart, in, in some ways, looks his age. But I think in other ways, uh, seems incredibly fit. And I'm thrilled at the prospect of getting a new Picard series. Uh, again, I will briefly say everything that frustrates me about Discovery seems to not be there for Picard. And I think that's great. It's clearly in the hands of people who love Star Trek and get it. And uh, if some of these fan theories in terms of where the story is going is true, that's even more that intriguing and I think ties quite nicely with uh, Next Generation's past, even nods to the IDW comic book countdown, which I enjoyed. Um, the prequel to uh, uh, J.J. Abrams' 2009 Star Trek that had a very heavy Next Generation influence because Spock Prime uh, was, you know, contemporary with the Next Generation universe and things going on. So um, clearly, I think what happened to Romulus uh, in Star Trek Nine figures prominently in Star Trek Picard, so it kind of links the J.J. verse to uh, official Star Trek canon even more solidly. And I'm okay with that. Again, um, I, like I said, all I can say is I like what I've seen. If you haven't seen it already, I'd be surprised. I'm sure you've already seen it on YouTube if you're a, a Star Trek fan. And also I mention all this because it links up with our uh, conversation today with uh, Jared Cohen, who just got done working with uh, three Star Trek veterans in Shatner, Jerry Ryan, and uh, Maurice Hurley. So that's interesting. So I, I just wanted to kind of include that. Uh, but uh, also to uh, you know point to our new conversation with Jared Cohen, filmmaker, uh, on today's Word Balloon. It's all brought to you by the League of Word Balloon listeners. Thank you, League, greatly for your support via Patreon. Patreon.com slash Word Balloon. If you'd like to subscribe to Word Balloon, please do. And, uh, man, I'll tell you, they're helping me out uh, with their, uh, their financial support. So I thank you greatly, League of Word Balloon listeners. And if you want to uh, join them... Do you think Word Balloon's worth a dollar a month to you in terms of content? Do you think it's worth the price of a comic book? You know, I'm not asking for the moon, but, uh, you know, I know that uh, there's at least 7,000 plus of you out there that are listening to these shows and enjoying them. Uh, the core audience seems to be about that, and uh, that's my, my Twitter followership right now. Um, so, yeah, if you can't help out, it would be uh, greatly help because I'll tell you, radio is uh, a roller coaster right now. I, it's either feast or famine in terms of how much I work in radio these days uh, on a part-time basis. And uh, the full-time jobs just aren't there. So I'm doing what I can in radio, and I'm doing what I can here in podcasting. And again, you guys are really helping out, so thank you greatly, League of Word Balloon listeners. Word Balloon is also brought to you by Aftershock Comics. Aftershock it had a great uh, New York Comic Con as well, and uh, some great announcements. And I hope you will go to their website and check out all the details there. Uh, they've got a great roster of uh, creators and uh, people like Joe Pruitt, one of their uh, go-to editors who's uh, doing the horror anthology Shock. And there's also great people like Garth Ennis and Marguerite Bennett and uh, Donnie Cates and Cullen Bunn, Tim Seeley, Phil Hester, so many great creators, Stephanie Phillips, uh, Chris Sabella, and uh, hell, a lot of them have been featured on Word Balloon. More are coming in the days ahead here at Word Balloon to talk to about their wonderful books. You don't have to wait, though. Go to their website. Check out their slate of books and also uh, news announcements as well. You'll find full story descriptions, preview pages of art, and the diamond codes on the Aftershock books and how to order them through your local shop at AftershockComics.com. All right. Without further ado, let's get into this conversation now with filmmaker Jared Cohen. Uh, two really interesting uh, movies coming up, a great new movie with William Shatner and Jerry Ryan, but also a very interesting biopic about uh, the tragic end to Leonard Skinner. So without further ado, my conversation with Jared Cohen on Word Balloon. Jared Cohen, welcome to Word Balloon. Thanks for taking the time for uh, talking to me, and uh, I'm, I'm very excited about these projects you got going on, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, appreciate you having me on. Um, and, uh, you know, just trying to, trying to make, trying to be creative. That's it. <laughs> I, uh, well, first of all, you got Devil's Revenge uh, coming up and, uh, among your stars of Devil's Revenge, you got, uh, Jerry Ryan and William Shatner, some fine Star Trek veterans and everything. Tell me about this production. Yeah. Good production, you know, um, I, you know, we filmed we filmed the movie out in Kentucky, 
I enjoyed the shoot, um, and the script was written by Maurice Hurley. You know, he wrote Borg, uh, but you know, like, like yeah, like another Star Trek fan, absolutely, man. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the shoot, it, it was good. You know, we got. Uh, I think the movie comes out today. Actually, that's excellent. <laughs> Video on demand. Did. Yeah, just came out uh, opening day, so we'll see what the people say. It, you know, <laughs> it's kind of one of those things where you, you you put something out and you never know. People will be like, "Oh, this is cool," or they're like, "Oh, this is, you know, we don't like this movie." So I guess <laughs> next few days will be the re- will be the the reckoning. That's cool. And, and, and by the way, man, the filter's off. So if you if you want to swear, you're welcome to swear. It's okay. <laughs> but, oh, okay. Good, but, good, uh, good. No, fuck, no fucking filter. There you go. boy. <laughs> this is yeah. great, man. Give people the 10 cent uh, tour. How would you how would you describe the movie to someone walking in cold? Um, you know, Shatner and his crew, you know, they're blowing up. You know, killing demons. You know, <laughs> trying to get there that have killed them. So there, it was like a war, the war between demons and hell and Shatner and his crew. And you know, the, but the war has been going on for you know, about you know, centuries. It's a d- demonic war. Sure. So you get into the mythology, obviously, of uh, of this battle, on you know, uh, in, be- between the demon hunters and the demons. Yeah, it's, there's a whole thing going on. Uh, prequel, you know, that's something that we should possibly throw on the table. Is doing a Devil's Revenge pre prequel. I almost, I almost wondered if you were, you know, when you when you guys make these kinds of movies, uh, how much franchise is on your mind? I mean, certainly tough enough to make movie one, but uh, you uh, know, it's, it's hard. Every movie getting made is small miracle um, uh, yeah I mean oh, so what was that oh, okay well what was I going to say okay I was going to say that you know, I did jailbait one right and uh-huh. then they wanted a sequel so that I did jailbait two <laughs> but they changed the name in some places it's called jailbait two so some places it's called Lock, locked up uh, and I did Atlantic Rim 1 and Atlantic Rim 2 sequels. So I have two uh, two films that I've done have uh, had sequels. So you got to think about the franchise possibility because if people like the movie, you know, and they want to know more about that particular story, like Breaking Bad, you know, not to compare anything I've done anywhere near it. Like, it was great as Breaking Bad, but then now they, they did Better Call Saul. Yep. Deep TV. Great time. I mean, I watched all of it. And obviously they got El Camino coming out. That's right. Which, uh, definitely going to have to see that one. Um, you know, tell me about uh, the business now in terms of streaming alongside uh, the possibilities of direct-to-video and Redbox and people finding movies that way and stuff. I mean, has this um, has this opened doors for you in terms of uh, more potential films to direct, or has it just been steady and uh, this is just another platform? How have you observed it? Are you talking about, like, the DOD? Yeah, yeah, but also now uh, with, the added, with the added layer of streaming along with, you know, people hunting down DVDs and stuff like that. And, you know, like I said, going to Redbox or, you know, finding films that way and yeah. everything. But how, how is the streaming uh, uh, explosion, you know, helping physical, you Physical's dead, yeah. I mean, it's all streaming, you know. It's all Netflix and, you know, some of the other platforms. Uh, but no, nobody's really getting DVDs anymore. And, okay. Yeah, it's not 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 over here. Not I mean, I live in LA. You know, mm-hmm. I, I know some different places of the of the country. You know, physical is still 
you know, they sell Walmart. It's a big, you know, they make big orders. Um, so that's a big deal if you get your film into Walmart. But there's not many big, you know, shops like that. Walmart is, you know, king of the game. Sure. And, and physical. But is it has it helped you get more film gigs, or has it just been steady in the same thing? I was just wondering how streaming has impacted production compared to what it was um, before. You know, produ- there's a lot of productions going on. Yeah. Um, has, has that impacted me? Um, I don't know. You okay. Know, because <laughs> I, have, I, have no, I have no point of reference. There's a lot of filmmakers, you know, there's, there's more, more films being produced, you know, of course, and there were, you know, and there's more channels, there's more platforms, but at the same time, you have more, uh, filmmakers. So the, the, there's always going to be more people wanting to make films than there are films that are being made sure by you know with real budgets you know not not talking about the let's you know we can shoot something real quick but you know 100,000 300,000 plus you know at least okay i uh how long how long was the shoot for uh, for this film um we had uh Short, you know, under twenty days. Wow, it was, yeah. Is it that was normal? Short. Is that normal for your films? I mean, I, again, I know you're operating on a, you know, a, a, a gorilla low budget kind of thing. But is that is that typical for your productions? Um, so, I mean, sometimes we, we we all have longer. Sometimes we'll have much shorter. Sometimes you know, I, I I've had to make you know. I think I well, I mean, I made a legit. A pretty decent movie, which I saw. One of, uh, I think we shot it in nine days. Wow. Yeah, and some people are doing films in you know six, seven, eight days, ten days, eleven, twelve. Eight, 13. I mean, there's all these films are being made uh, in that in that tight of a schedule. Like, you know, it's 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 it's, it's nutty to think you have to like run around and shoot. You're just shooting, 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 creating, uh, you know, content. You need content. But content is king. Sure. I mean, on one end of the spectrum. So if you can come up, if you can shoot a movie in three days and you have a movie, then you have, you know, content that's valuable to some, you know, to people. I have to admit, I haven't seen Virus. I ha- I haven't seen it yet, but uh, your King Arthur movie uh, intrigued me, and I thought that was pretty cool that you were doing kind of a modern day gangster kind of uh, King Arthur. Uh, that 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 sounds really cool, and I, I'm going to have to uh, I I, I got to dig that out and and uh, and, and view that. I remember uh, seeing the PR uh, uh, reports when when that movie came out two years ago. Yeah, I mean it, it still play, it plays on Showtime a bunch. Of, uh, oh, that's I, funny. I hadn't seen uh, any of that stuff, that movie, in a while. But then, recently, uh, I, I was going through some of the footage, and yeah, it's, you know, there's some some wacky stuff in there. It's fun. <laughs> That's really cool. Now, uh, as we were getting started to uh, to get going here, um, you, uh, I mentioned that I'm really intrigued by this biopic you're doing on on Leonard Skinner, and uh, what can you tell me about this film? Yeah. This is, uh, you know, for me, it's uh, an important film. Uh, and, you know, there was a lot, there was a lot of, uh, a lot that went into making that film. Uh, and a lot that happened after we made the film. And I like, I like, you know, at the end of the day, I saw, I saw the film recently with some people it was sort of like a very very private test screening okay uh you know and the, 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 
the focus, it was like sort of a focus group. The the reaction was was positive. Cool. Uh, you know, much more positive than I than I would have even would have guessed. Like you know, and I so the film has been. Uh, it's currently, you know, there's set there's sixteen film festivals that I'm waiting to hear back from that I submitted the film to. Okay. And, and you know, I may submit it to some more fest, depending on uh, what not, but uh, we'll see, man. And, you know, it was a, it was, I think it's going to be a good film. Well, it's, uh, a, it's a hell of a subject, man. And, I mean, I'm, I'm old enough that I remember when, when the plane crash happened in the late 70s, and, I mean, it was obviously such a shock to everybody. And also, uh, with this much time passed, I think people, you know, people don't realize there were survivors, for instance, to the plane crash, which is pretty amazing. Are you focusing on the plane crash only, or are you doing a full biopic of the band? Um, it's kind of like, it, it's sort of, it's sort of, is, is, without giving away yeah. too much, you know, the story, uh, you know, it's, it, it has, it's compressed, sort of, you know, I, I don't want to, if I answer that question, then, uh, then, then, you're tipping your hand. I don't want, I, I don't, I, you know, I just want the movie to, to be come out, to come out and, uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's, you never know because so many of these movies just come and they go, and uh-huh. like most of them, you know, the legs. Are, you know, there's no more legs. Like a film used to be something that people went and they saw, and then a lot of people saw the same thing, and we were, yeah. you know, you're able to talk about it in a communal way. Uh huh. Sure. You know, it you hits a city. Now. Yeah, it hits a city, and I mean, everyone um, is able to see it, and. You know, and even nationally and yeah. stuff like that. No, I, I understand that. And certainly, I know that... Well, it's social media. People, you know, people do talk about their, you know. So, it, it's all went the way of uh, online. Everybody's sure. online. You can use that to your advantage, though, too. And I'm sure that there are... Uh, are, are Skinner uh, fans already buzzing about your movie? Um, In a positive or negative way. And certainly, I'm rooting for you, but, you know... I mean, what's the what's I the word out there? I went on the Facebook. Okay. I went on, you know, some of the some of the group, and uh, yeah, I guess I should go back now. That well, there's no <laughs> release. There's no. Uh, I'd have to see what what they would say when there's like a premiere date schedule. Right okay. now, there's no there's no prem- movies done. Okay. And it's it's been submitted. So sure. Have you, uh, have you submitted? I'm in Chicago. Have you submitted to any of our film festivals here in Chicago? I did. Good. Yeah. I Great to hear. I submitted to the to the Chicago Film Festival. Terrific. Well, that's the big one. So that's cool. That's the big one. Yeah, man. There's a good Chicago Critics Film Festival is really good too, and that's one that uh, takes place uh, earlier in the summer. And uh, and I know a lot of a lot of good quality indie films. Make it to that one and stuff. So, I, I, if you haven't considered that one, I hope you do. Um, you know, but is this yeah, your, is yeah. this your first uh, um, biopic for a for a band like this? I mean, you, this type of movie compared to you know the horror and, and and genre stuff that you've done in the past. It is. It absolutely is. Was this a passion project? I mean, is this a story you really wanted to tell? Yeah, because, you know, be certainly I was, I've never done anything remotely like it where, you know, you have to do extensive research and tell a accurate story. Um, this is definitely the first true, uh, true, uh, I've done things that were based on true events. Okay. You know, you know, like ripped from the headlines, like sure. you know, movie of the week type stuff. But, <laughs> sure. Yeah, 
I mean, this this project, was, you know, a lot went into it. So, yeah, we'll just have to hope. I just have to hope. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I, you know, at the end of the day, everything, uh, you know, comes and goes. Cinema, you know, oh, whether sure. if it's something on VOD or even in the theaters, whatever. So it, it, it was a crazy shoot. We, we, we got sued, you yeah, know, I was for making the movie. I, yeah, I tell, you know, God, I'm, I'm sorry about that. That sucks. You know, I guess yeah, some people lost. don't. Some people just don't want that story told. I mean, uh, well, do you know the? Yeah, uh, is that a way to describe the motivation behind the suit? I, I don't know. Yeah, 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 and yeah. The movie got the movie was banned for about a year. Wow. Uh, she lost the lawsuit, and then we appealed and we won, and then the movie, you know, the movie's yeah. able to come out now. So that's great, man. It was really a bummer. Yeah, it was really a bummer. You know, sure. We all worked hard, and then someone decides, uh, you know, I don't want this thing coming out. I'm going to throw like a million dollars at at, at law- lawyers and Shit. lawsuits. Yeah, that sucks. Ridiculous. No, that's horrible. That's horrible, man. <clears throat> you would think, you yeah. know, again, it's a it is a a real news thing that happened, and it's a, it was a big. Sad moment in in rock history when uh, you know uh, Van Sant and uh, the couple band members passed. I know that uh, I was as I did research to talk to you and stuff. I was surprised to learn that uh, there are survivors of the plane crash as well, and I'm sure uh, the guilt and also uh, the experience I'm sure is a, is something that haunts them to this day. Um, God, it's uh, yeah. again. I I had always as a kid thought that it kind of wiped out, you know, a good portion of the band, and it did, but, I mean, again, it, it surprised me. I, I mean, you know, uh, man, rock and roll plane crashes, good Lord. Uh, you know, going back to Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper and Richie Valens and Jim yeah. Croce and right. Wilson Pickett, you know, all these all these terrible plane crashes over the years of, of these, you know, just tragedies where, we, you know, these established artists are just, you know, gone one day. I mean, that's, that's again, I mean, uh, like I said, I remember the sadness around Soul Survivor, that album that had literally just come out before before the crash happened and everything. So that's, uh, that's I mean, yeah, it's, I, I think it's an incredible story. And also, it seems to me, also coming off of uh, even the Ken Burns uh, country music documentary that just wrapped up on PBS, uh, I know you made this thing a couple of years ago, but it, I've really seen some exceptional rock documentaries and, and biopics I mean, you know, again with Rock and Man, Bohemian Rhapsody, and stuff like that. Is this is this more of a documentary, or is this a fictionalized uh, account of the of the story? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a narrative. Yeah, okay, not, not a doc. Okay, not a documentary. Okay, wow, man. Um, um. Again, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate you know wanting the movie to speak for itself, especially as you're trying to reach this first step of, uh, of festivals and everything. But I am, uh, you know, yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by the project, and I, I really, I look forward to uh, when it's ready. Hell, man, when it's ready, I hope you'll come back. I'd love to talk to you about it when we can. <laughs> really, look oh, at it and discuss it. Yeah, I mean, it, it just has to get. Uh, it's. I want it to come out really bad, um, and, and you know, but I wanted to. I, w- I wanted to premiere at a, uh, at least you know one. It's a good. Uh, film festival and then um you know come out so that's what i, I just submitted it to a bunch of uh to, you know really you know strong festivals cool you know and and then it'll come out and then once once it gets in and plays one that's that's it you know then it's off everyone will be able to see it whenever they want if they want Absolutely. Or if not. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any uh, are there any name actors that that we would know that are that are in the production that you could say? Um, we went. It's mostly uh, you know. I don't want to say unknowns, um, but you know that's because it's sort of a weird term. But I know. Yeah, there's no no big. 
stars. Uh, we kept it. Re- we kept it real. You know, and real musicians that had the. You know, the knew the the the, the lifestyle of being a musician, it, it, which I think helped. I mean, it's it's sort of. Yeah, it's different. It's, I, I think it's different. I think it's different from what people might assume it to be, or not. I mean, who knows? <laughs> but I, I, I think so. I don't know anything. I mean, I, yeah, I, I really couldn't. I'm, I'm hesitant to say anything on anything because every time you say something, someone else is gonna could think something and say, "Oh, well, actually, it's it's this. It's like this, not like that." So. I, you know, it's such a scrutinous world that people are so uh, critical. Yeah, yeah, and it seems like there's more and more critics uh, every day now uh, with YouTube and uh, social media. Uh, you know, the, the I mean, hell, this podcast itself. Although, uh, again, I come with no judgment, man. I'm uh, I uh, I am intrigued by the subject, and I'm I'm glad to hear that you've got uh, newcomers in the film. The story should be able to tell itself, and I think it's easier to slip into the story if you're not, you know, sitting there going, "Oh my God, it's uh, you know Robert Redford to throw a name out of my ass," and, yeah. you know. So, yeah. no, I'm I'm cool. I'm with I'm with you there. And again, I just it's a really interesting time period in rock as well because I do think that a lot of the the largesse that that bands indulged in. Uh, I mean, this is the height of, I mean, God, I mean, they were, you know, they're chartering their own plane, Skinner and everything to, to, to make the, you know, this, this flight and everything. And I know it was an older plane and then it was funny. They were about to upgrade to, uh, you know, a Learjet or whatever. So, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, it's uh, no, it's a, it's a fascinating story. And I really think, um, again, I think it's a great subject and I'm, I'm glad you're tackling it. Well, uh, today the focus is on, uh, Devil's Revenge. With uh, William Shatner and Jerry Ryan, and uh, it's out, a, out now. Out now, <laughs> out now, man. So yeah, people can uh, people can find it video on demand, uh, all the usual all the usual places. And uh, like I said, what's the title of the Skinner uh, film? Street Survivors: The True Story of the Leonard Skinner Plane Crash. There you go, and uh, hopefully uh, coming soon to a film festival near you. And uh, I wish you a lot of luck on that. Like I said, man, I'm. Uh, I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for uh, a Chicago debut of the film and, uh, and uh, hopefully eventually a wide release. And uh, really, man, when the, when the Skinner film's ready and you're ready to talk about it, I hope you'll come back because, as I said, I, I, taking nothing away from uh, Devil's Revenge, I, I really, uh, I'm intrigued by this uh, Skinner project and I wish you a lot of luck. I think it's a great subject and uh, would really be interested to see what you do with it. So, Jared Cohen, thank you for coming on and uh, I hope we get to talk again. Thanks so much for having me. There you go, two new movies from uh, Jared Cohen to look forward to, and one is out right now with all the Star Trek vets. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed my uh, conversation as well at the beginning here about Star Trek Picard. Looking forward to your comments as well as we get closer. Hell, the short treks start this Thursday. I'll certainly be watching and and talking about those as they continue. Also, the CW shows started dropping this weekend, Batwoman and Supergirl. I got to tell you, I went to see Joker so I haven't had a chance uh, as the, of this recording to um, think about Batwoman or Supergirl, but I did see Joker, and uh, man, I am looking forward to having a nice Joker conversation. Um, I would say out of four stars, I'd give it a, a, a positive two and a half. I do have my issues with story choices of the movie. I mean, I went into it thinking it was going to be an alternate Joker uh, film. And uh, I uh, and I uh, that's what we got, obviously. But uh, you can't help but notice uh, some of the nods to the Bat Universe that I think went further than I was expecting. As always, and you know, shame on me. I'm the first one to say when people see movies and say, "Well, they didn't do this right. They didn't do that right." Whether it's Star Wars, Star Trek, and I certainly am a, a you know a detractor when it comes to Star Trek Discovery. We all know it. But you know, we have preconceived notions of how things are going to be. We bring those into um, television and also film. And truly, I wonder how Batwoman is going to be. If you heard the Greg Rucke uh, replay interview when he was talking about the initial, his initial thoughts about creating Catherine Kane, Kate Kane. Um, 
I, I look forward to seeing uh, the Batwoman pilot and uh, seeing how it stacks up in the first new episode of uh, the new Supergirl season. Our buddy Jay F- uh, Ferber is uh, part of the writing staff now of Supergirl. He's under NDAs, and I, and I do understand. Man, I keep hearing so many of my friends are working on these uh, great new television shows. The Benson sisters are on the uh, Nickelodeon animated Star Trek show. And, of course, they're under NDA, so they can't talk about that. It bums me out, man. It's frustrating to be that close, and yet, eh, sorry, we can't talk about it. But um, back to Joker, yeah, I'll, I'll, I, I do recommend if you want to see, if you have any interest in the movie, even if it was a passing interest, and uh, like my buddy Rob Meyer Burnett says on his YouTube show, uh, if in his, his group he calls the post-geek singularity, but uh, that means all us nerds and, uh, and geeks out there, <clears throat> comic book lovers, if you're a fan of, of the Joker character... <clears throat> I urge you to see the movie because I do believe that uh, it has interesting choices um, and it's worth seeing if you're at all curious. And there are good things about the movie, but again, there are just story choices that that bothered me. I thought Joaquin Phoenix did an amazing job. It's a great acting performance. Um, uh, I've, I've, I've heard some little disturbances as far as the fears of the Joker movie already happening uh, in some theaters. In fact, uh, the Sunday night when I saw it with my friend uh, Jeff Quarter, who I likely will be talking to about Joker here on the podcast, <clears throat> yeah, we noticed that another theater in the city there were no there was no, no violence, thank God. But a couple of people were smoking because uh, the Joker character smokes in the movie, and uh, you know, again, they have security at these big theaters, and it's like, don't frankly forgive my French, but don't be an asshole. Here's an idea. I don't know what you're what, what you're thinking you're going to accomplish, even as something as stupid as that. I mean, it's like don't be a jerk at the movies. I mean, God, and it's I, I was more worried about kind of jerk behavior um, I, I, as opposed to violent behavior. And again, it's a movie. Calm down, good lord. Um, yeah, but I but again, I've got I've got a lot of conflicting thoughts about the Joker film. And I look forward to uh, t- sharing them with you on Word Balloon in the days ahead. It is the initial weekend. But I, I will be doing a spoiler uh, Joker conversation at some point in the next few days. And I will be posting that incredibly soon. So look for that. And also today, a brand new conversation with Brian Hitch. I am happy to have Brian back. Man, I'll tell you, Batman Grave debuts on Wednesday. And uh, it's, it's a fantastic book. Also, Brian did an incredible one-shot with my buddy Jason Latour, featuring Lex Luthor in the Year of the Villain for DC. Outstanding story. Beautifully drawn by Brian. Incredible visual ideas, because it's uh, multiverse-traveling Luthor uh, meeting his uh, younger self. In fact, I'll even reveal this for the story. It's uh, the Earth where Superman was Superboy back in the Silver Age. And it's young Lex Luthor with a full head of red hair right before the terrible accident that caused Luthor's hair to fall out. And so he isn't quite evil yet. And uh, our, our Earth-1 Luthor takes uh, young Silver Age Luthor on a trip through the multiverse and visits the various Luthers across the multiverse, proving that Luthor is inevitable in terms of the way his life turns out. It's a fantastic story. Um, unbelievable stuff. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of nods to previous Superman mythos, some uh, classic Superman stories, beyond the fact that we're dealing with Silver Age Lex Luthor from the uh, the old 60s Superboy era, and uh, why his hatred of Superman began as, uh, as a kid. Um, it's in the Smallville pilot as well. You know, he loses his hair, uh, and he, he blamed, well, in the, in the uh, Superboy, pi- or in Smallville's pilot, it was all about uh, the meteorites, you know, the, the, the meteors caused uh, Lex's hair to fall out. And in the Silver Age, it was an experiment that uh, Luther was working on, and, and it caught fire, and Superboy blew it out. And the flames, and, and the combination of the flames and the chemicals uh, Luther was working with caused Luther's hair to fall out, but he blamed Superboy. Uh, whatever. Again, it was, you know, it, they were kids' comics. It was the Silver Age. But uh, great start, and it's an incredible story. And Brian just drew the hell out of it. So you'll enjoy this conversation I have with Brian about that. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation with Jared Cohen. 
And uh, Word Balloon, as always, uh, brought to you by the League of Word Balloon listeners. If you'd like to subscribe to Word Balloon, you don't have to, but you are absolutely helping me out and helping me expand Word Balloon as well with your patronage through Patreon. Patreon.com slash Word Balloon, or you can just click on the Patreon ad on the front page of WordBalloon.com. That will take you to my Patreon page. Thank you greatly for your support. If, if you think Word Balloon is worth it and you've got uh, the, the means to uh, help and subscribe to Word Balloon, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you all, League of Word Balloon listeners. Word Balloon is also brought to you by Aftershock Comics. I talk about them because I enjoy their books, man. And yes, they're a sponsor of Word Balloon. It's coming on a year of Word Balloon's uh, sponsorship from Aftershock. And I greatly appreciate the support that everyone over at Aftershock has given me. And uh, I, uh, I intend to uh, thank them uh, beyond uh, the words uh, in the days ahead as well. But uh, check out their books, man. Animosity from Marguerite Bennett, Stronghold from Phil Hester and Ryan Kelly, uh, Dark Red from Tim Seeley, Dark Ark from Cullen Bunn and Juan Doe, uh, you, uh, you Are Obsolete from Matthew Clickstein, and um, <clears throat> great books from uh, Chris Sabella and Stephanie Phillips. Um, you know, unbelievable stuff, genre-bending stuff that I think everyone will find an Aftershock book that they will enjoy. Check it out for yourself. You'll find full story descriptions, preview pages, and the diamond books, the diamond codes, I should say, on how to order these books through your local shop at AftershockComics.com. Thanks again for listening. Again, Brian Hitch also dropping today later on Word Balloon. I hope you'll check it out. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy, continue to enjoy some of the great stuff that I've got lined up here for October on Word Balloon. Until next time, Word Balloon is a copyright feature of Shaky Productions, copyright 2019.